In this tutorial, we will talk about the anesthetics and we will start our discussion from the term anesthesia. Then we will define the anesthetics. After that, we will study the types in the drugs. After that, we will talk about the mechanism of action of these drugs. And at the end, we will discuss about the stages of the general anesthetics. So let's start from the very first term. That is anesthesia. Anesthesia is actually a Greek term that is uh, further composed of an and anesthesia. An stands for without and anesthesia stands for sensation. So without sensation is actually the meaning of this anesthesia term. Now how we define the anesthetics? And anesthetics, this is actually the term that refers to the drugs. Okay, so the drugs used to induce insensitivity to pain. Insensitivity to pain. So now in this definition, we are further going to elaborate this term anesthesia. So the drugs used to induce insensitivity to pain and sometimes used to induce unconsciousness. So anesthetics are actually the drugs which we are using for two purposes. One is to insensitivity to pain. Another one is to induce unconsciousness. So we, these both conditions are required when, when we are talking about the surgeries. So in case of the minor surgeries, we use anesthetics to induce insensitivity to pain. That uh, the patients must not feel pain then when we are doing the minor surgeries. And regarding the major surgeries, the anesthetics are used to induce insensitivity to pain plus unconsciousness. So these both are actually achieved by means of the anesthetics. And uh, one must know the difference between the minor and major surgeries. Let me elaborate these two terms again here. So the minor surgeries include the surgeries of the mouth or uh, somehow when you are doing stitching, etc. So these are the minor surgeries. And regarding major surgeries, we have a number of examples. So some of them are the when you are doing the transplant of any organ or any other C-section, it's a trouble you're performing. And these kind of surgeries are actually uh, placed under the heading of the major surgeries. So hopefully you got these two terms. Now let's come towards the types and the drugs of the anesthetics. So we have uh, two types of the uh, anesthetics. One is the local anesthetic, another one is the general anesthetics. And more specifically talking, the local anesthetics are actually used for the minor surgeries and the general anesthetics drugs are actually used for the major surgery purposes. So uh, the drugs used in the local anesthetics are esters and amides. In general, we have inhalational and intravenous. Now let's know the name. After that, we will move towards the mechanisms. So in the local anesthetics, we have esters. Esters are surface acting, short acting and long acting. And I hope you know the meaning of the esters and amide. So these are actually the function groups. Okay. So long acting, short acting and surface acting. We have the drugs are the cocaine for the surface acting esters, local anesthetics, short acting esters, local anesthetics, long acting esters, local anesthetics. So drugs examples are the cocaine, procaine, tetracaine and amides are the ropivacaine and lidocaine. It's really easy to remember these anesthetics because they all end with cane, 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 cane. You can easily remember. Okay. Now let's move towards the general anesthetics. We have two inhalational intravenous. Inhalational are further composed of the gaze and volatile. And again, I hope you know the difference between these two terms, the gaze and volatile. You know, the gaze is a state of matter in which uh, you have the gaseous phase and volatile is any compound when you place it at room temperature that will start converting into vapors that is called volatile i hope it's clear so now let's move towards example gaze uh, example is nitrous oxide used as an anesthetic and uh, the volatiles are the halothane chloroform ethyl chloride diethyl ether and uh, fluorines so you know in the fluorines we have number of other fluorines also like disfluorine etc fluorines we have number of examples so in short these are actually the inhalational general anesthetics inhalational and the next one is the intravenous anesthetics the general intravenous anesthetics include barbiturates benzodiazepines opioids etomidate propofol etc and the drugs of the barbiturates are a number of drugs okay the one that is used for the general purposes the general anesthetic purpose that is thiopental and uh, benzodiazepines is medazolam whereas of the opioids is fentanyl so these are the drugs used IV for the general anesthetic purposes and one very interesting point regarding uh, the inhalation and IV is that first of all when we are going for uh, the anesthesia first of all the anesthesia is obtained by IV after that it is maintained by using the inhalational 
these are drugs. It's a very interesting point. Remember this. Now let's come towards the mechanism. So regarding the mechanism's point of view, it is believed that there is no any well-known mechanism. But after many research, these two mechanisms are just placed in textbook in order to have a concept of these drugs. So the very first mechanism is for the local anesthetics and the second one is for the general anesthetics. Now these all drugs, they are actually uh, functional by these two mechanisms somehow, okay? The very first one for the local. Let me first of all tell the normal pathway, how uh, normally the cell are actually acting uh, in the local region. Whenever there is a kind of stimulus given to the local cells, so what will happen? You know, uh, outside is positive and inside is negative. The sodium will start moving as the cell is stimulated, okay? A stimulus is received by the cell. Sodium will start moving inside the cell. There will be an influx of the sodium ions. So inside will become positive gradually, okay? This positivity will induce the generation of stimulus and then this stimulus will be propagated further. Means the signal of the particular stimulus will be forwarded towards the central nervous system. So what we need in the local anesthetics, uh, when we are doing the minor surgeries, we want to anesthetize locally the particular portion of the body. So we are giving the anesthetics. So what will our anesthetics do then? Remember one interesting point about anesthetics that these anesthetic must be unionized. So the unionized can cross easily. You know, when it is in ion shape, that cannot cross the lipid layer. So the ionized anesthetics are actually uh, lipid insoluble. And we need unionized to cross the lipid bilayer. So the unionized will cross the lipid bilayer. And after that, they will become and will bind to the specific receptor present on the channel. Uh, and like this, when they bind to the channel, then the halt gate, the shortly known as H gate, uh, will be closed after the binding of the anesthetics to the sodium channels so like this what will happen then the sodium will not move in means the influx of sodium will be blocked so if sodium is not moving in you guys got the concept then inside will stay negative because uh, before this was sodium to cause the positivity or to induce the signal generation propagation so now sodium is not moving in so inside is negative so the signal will not be generated and it will not be propagated also so if it's not generated it's obvious that it will not be propagated also means that the signal will not be given to the particular portion that is under the surgical procedure minor surgery now let's move towards the general regarding general anesthetics it is believed that the general anesthetics actually block the GABA and EMPA and MDA receptors after they are blocked then the sensitivity is actually somehow lost so like this our central nervous system which is controlling our entire body then it will become unconscious and uh, I hope you got a little bit idea regarding the uh, mechanism of the general aesthetics so you know uh, the glutamate which is the excitatory neurotransmitter and the GABA which is the inhibitory neurotransmitter present in the central nervous system and this glutaminergic neuron will release the glutamate neurotransmitter and that will bind to the empire and MD will stimulate this neuron and the GABAergic neuron here will release its GABA neurotransmitter which will come and bind to this GABA receptor and this receptor will become stimulated and this stimulated receptor will st do the influx of the negative ion that is chloride ion which is going to make inside negative so like this what will happen the glutaminergic neurons are actually stimulating this neuron and the GABAergic neuron are actually inhibiting this neuron so what we need in the anesthesia, we need a kind of inhibition of these pathways. So how will that be achieved? Simple. We we'll block these two receptors and we'll stimulate this receptor. And uh, stimulation, you know, is represented by the positive and inhibition is represented by the negative sign. So like this, we will inhibit these two receptors and we'll stimulate the GABA receptors. So by inhibiting these two receptors, then the glutamate neurotransmitter will not be able to bind to these receptors, means this will not be stimulated then. And like this, when we uh, stimulate the GABA receptor, so after the stimulation, then the GABA will start doing the influx of the chloride, which will further make inside negative like this, the inhibition will be achieved. So this is the way how our general anesthetics work. Now let's come towards the stages of the general anesthetics, the way they work. We have generally one, two, three, four stages. The very first stage is induction. And this stage, the very first thing observed will be pain sensations will be lost. Okay. And some books state that in this particular stage, the very first one, induction, sometimes amnesia might also be seen, means memory loss might also be observed. And some other books state that in the same stage, induction, there will be a kind of altered way of consciousness. A person will remain conscious, but there will be a kind of alteration in the consciousness condition, due to which the person might also uh, have amnesia, means memory loss. And the second 
stage is excitation or disinhibition. This is the very second stage in which what happens we are supposed to do the inhibition but it is actually undergoing the disinhibition or excitation for a very short period of time it is believed that okay for a short period of time what will happen the heart rate blood pressure breathing rate etc these will become irregular irregularity will be observed in the rates okay and in the same stage there will be amnesia also and next one is the surgical anesthesia this is the very step in which the surgery is performed so here what will happen the entire body will become regular all the mechanisms will become regular so and the next one the last one that is the medullary depression a very critical stage here if the medulla becomes depressed then you know your breathing center is medulla it will become depressed after depression a patient may move towards a stage that is death so what we do in this stage if anesthesia is proceeding towards the medullary depression the fourth stage then we actually apply some mechanical and pharmacological support to bring big the person towards the surgical anesthesia stage so like this our discussion of the general anesthetics become complete so hope so you got uh, if still you have any kind of question regarding the topic feel free to ask us in the comment box we are here to serve you guys and thank you for watching